Hey there, Mr. Real Poker peeps. Welcome to the vlog and chilly, chilly North Texas. The best news of the week, I did not have any bumps, bruises, accidents, <laughs> pitfalls, any of that kind of stuff. I made it out physically unscathed. No more cuts to the head, no more bumps and bruises, yay me. It was a fun week of playing poker, it was interesting. At our Wednesday Night Poker League, the, what are you calling, Texas Bureau of alcohol, tobacco, and firearms was at the bottom of the bar, so the owner came up and asked us not to play our regular cash game, even though it's probably okay, the house is not taking anything, but we didn't play our cash game, we played our regular tournament, uh, and that didn't go so well, I got sucked out on. But that was interesting. Then I went and played at Windstar, and I had one of the funnest sessions that I have ever had at Windstar. It was really, really good. Most of this vlog is gonna go over that. And finally, I did go to Choctaw for the World Series of Poker Circuit, but I think that it's gonna to be too long to put that one on this vlog, so this vlog will probably be continued to talk about what happened at the WSOPC at Choctaw. So part of the mental game is just simply how you react to different situations in poker. How do you react when you're beat? How do you react when you win? How do you react when there's somebody rude at the table? How do you react when this, that, or the other? <laughs> so there's a, there's a ton of that stuff to talk about. Well, we're gonna talk about one particular situation this week where how do you react when you bluff and get caught? A very, very interesting situation that happened this week. So, I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you're warmer than I am. And let's get on to the hands and to some poker. So, Friday, October 25th, off to Windstar to play a little cash. Sat down at a 1-3 table. I think I played two orbits. Recognized that these players were pretty good for a 1-3 game. Uh, I was down $80, so I got a table change. And sometimes you can tell the temperature of a table just from a few hands. So the first two hands went like this. I am under the gun with pocket tens. I have $300. I make it 13. The hijack, the small blind, and the big blind all call. The flop with 52 in the pot comes. Ace of hearts, jack of diamonds, six of hearts. Not ideal for pocket tens. <laughs> but the first two guys check. I go ahead and make it $30 and everybody folds. Okay, I like the way that this table is starting. And the second hand, I have king of clubs, queen of diamonds in the big blind. There's a straddle to six under the gun. Uh, there's two callers. I make it $18 and everybody folds. <laughs> Again, sometimes you can tell the temperature of a table just from a few hands and I think this might be a much, much easier table so a bit later, I have $290, I have ace, 10 of hearts, I'm on the button. There are three limpers, I make it $15. Middle position two, and the cutoff call. So the flop with 52 in the pot comes, queen of hearts, 10 of spades, eight of hearts. It checks to me, I bet 25, and both players call. Middle position two is a guy named Turner, who we'll meet a little bit later, and the cutoff was a guy who, ah, eh, just a guy. The turn now with 127 in the pot is the six of diamonds. They check to me, I size it up, I make it 85, and both players fold. Another relatively easy win. Okay, but it can't be easy all night. <laughs> At least I, I don't think so. Anyhow, the guy sitting to my left is from Michigan State. His name is Tom. He watches my vlog, he said hello. Tom has a huge stack. I uh, hadn't played against him before. It turned out Tom was pretty darn good. So, on this hand, I'm in the small blind with $360. I have seven of spades, seven of hearts. There are three limpers to me. I make it 18. Tom, in the big blind, with about $1,800, bumps it up to 55. Middle position one makes the call. I thought, he's got enough money, I can certainly set mine here. I make the call. 
And at this point, I really haven't seen him play very many hands. I just know he has a big stack, so I don't know if he got that because he was good or lucky or whatever. So the flop, 171 of the pot, comes eight of diamonds, nine of clubs, 10 of diamonds. Um, I check, Tom makes it 75, MP1 goes all in for only $47. I tank and I tank and I tank. I realize that there aren't a whole lot of great cards for me. I'm open-ended. A six is fantastic, but is a jack good or is a jack not good? Depends on whether he's doing this with aces or kings or ace-king or something with a queen in it. So, reverse odds implied, be damned, I go ahead and make the call. So the turn with 368 in the pot is, of course, a jack. <laughs> the jack of spades. I check. Tom shoves all in. I now have made my bed. I have to lie in it. I make the call. The river is the eight of clubs. The Tom in the big blind has pocket queens, ouchie poo. And the guy that was under the gun who called the raise and all that kind of stuff, queen six of diamonds. <laughs> and he got a chop also. Anyhow, I got stacked off on that hand. Uh, not good, pretty frustrating. So I rebuy for 300 again, maximum at this table. And then I won like five pots in a row, little resistance. As long as I didn't play against Tom or one other guy, uh, there was, it was pretty easy. Uh, I got it up to 425, and then we're going to talk about our buddy Turner. Turner was probably one of the funnest guys I've ever played with. I found out he was 87 years old. Now, he certainly didn't look 87. He didn't act 87. He looked like he was, I don't know, maybe late 60s, early 70s. Uh, black guy, just as fun as he could possibly be. Uh, played loose, played fast, <laughs> had a huge stack. Uh, Turner was awesome. But Turner could not hold the chips. Turner could not stack the chips. <laughs> Turner must have dropped chips on the floor. One guy said at least two dozen times. <laughs> so guys were helping Turner stack his chips, put them in racks. We let him play on the rack eventually, which is really not encouraged at Windstar. But because, I mean, there was a delay on every single hand because Turner was had so many chips, he's dropping them all over the floor. And Turner played every single hand. It was pretty amazing. A typical hand would go, Turner plays, he wins the pot, they push him the chips, he tries to stack them up, they go all over the place. <laughs> People try to help him stack them. He's still knocking them over. And by in the meantime, the next hand is being dealt. And Turner would say something like, I I'm not going to play this hand. I'm going to try to stack my chips. He would then look at his cards and he'd say something like, oh my gosh, this hand is so good. I got to play this one. And he said it on every single one. And something so good was like Jack Four suited. <laughs> It was pretty funny, but you know what? He was so hot, he hit everything, and I guess every hand was good for him. It was amazing. Uh, but a great guy, a lot of fun. He liked to banner and talk it up and, and just do all sorts of stuff like that. He was really, really fun to play with. All right, the table got considerably tougher uh, when kind of late at night, a couple of uh, pretty good regular players joined. So on this hand, I have $450. I'm under the gun. I have pocket aces. Ace of clubs, ace of hearts. I make it 12, the plus one, the button, and the big blind, who is one of these newer good players, make the call. The flop with 49 in the pot came queen, 10, seven. Uh, the big blind had checked in the dark. I made it 20. The other two players folded and he makes the call. The turn with 89 in the pot is a five. He had checked in the dark again. This time I bet 40, he makes the call. The river, 169 in the pot, is a six. Now he leads out for 60. Ugh, this could be anything. It could certainly be two pair, but it could also be a miss. He's a good enough player, so I make the call. He has Jack Queen, and I take that one down. The next hand again, Michigan State Tom. Uh, again, he's a very, very good player, I thought. His stack is about 1,800 at this time. I'm in the plus one with $500. I have six of clubs, six of spades. Uh, I make it 13. Tom in middle position one makes the call and so does the small blind and the big blind. The flop with 52 in the pot comes ace of clubs, seven of clubs, six of diamonds. Uh, goes check check to me. I make it 20. Tom now raises it up to 50. I like that. I got a set of sixes here. The other two fold and now I'm debating. 
whether I should raise or call, I made the call. So in retrospect, I just absolutely hate this call. I think it's a, just a horrid call. I should be raising here. Um, he's good enough to have a hand that's gonna raise me or he's completely bluffing. But if he has a hand that's good enough to raise me here, he's never folding for a raise to like 125. And I know I've got the best hand at this point, so uh, I should have done it. The turn, 152 in the pot, comes the 10 of spades. I check, he bets 30. I make the call. Again, I'm not really thrilled about this play. I should probably be leading out, um, although he could certainly have been betting on an 8-9 open-ended. Uh, but a $30 bet when I've got a set, I need to be raising that thing up. Not very good. The River now has 212 in the pot. I lead out for 60. He thinks for a minute and he folds because he's a very good player and he knows he has six seven for two pair and he knows that if i'm leading out there there's no way he beats two pair but i pretty much played this hand wrong on every single street except for pre-flop <laughs> that's not very good poker <laughs> i i should have been raising on the flop i should have been raising on the turn and I think it's questionable there whether I should be leading on the river um, for a couple of reasons. Um, he certainly could take another stab. He probably thinks he has the best hand if he does have two pair. And my lead out bet looks very, very strong. And he was right. It was strong. I just really played this hand poorly. So as I said earlier, this is a great table. Uh, a lot of action. The players were very, very friendly. Lots of very interesting conversation. Uh, some good poker conversation. And one of the things we talked about was, what should you do if you get caught in a bluff? And we talked about it and I said, hey, Jonathan Little says all the time, be proud of your bluff. If you get caught, turn your cards over confidently and, uh, and be proud of what you did. So one guy at the table, his name is Ron. He actually watches my vlog, or at least he's seen some of them. Uh, he's a, he's a semi-reg at, at uh, Windstar. I played against him a few times before. Anyhow, he says, that's absolutely true. And he told this story about a hand that he played. So Ron's in the plus one with jack of spades, 10 of spades, and he leads out for 13, the cutoff calls and the button calls. Uh, the flop of 43 in the pot came eight of clubs, two of spades, queen of spades. Uh, he leads out for 25. The cutoff folds, but the button calls. The turn with 93 in the pot was the six of clubs. Ron leads out for 60. The other guy calls. And the river, 213 in the pot, comes a four of clubs. Ron shoves all in for the other guy's effective stack of $302. And the other guy tanks and tanks and tanks and eventually makes the call. So Ron does exactly what Jonathan Little does. He picks up his cards, he turns them over confidently, 10 jack of spades for jack high. <laughs> and the other guy looks at his cards, he flicks them a few times, and he mocks. Evidently, the table just went crazy. Oh my gosh! How could you mock? How could you fold there? I guess one guy said, you called $300 and you can't beat Jack High? <laughs> and evidently, he said it a few times. Oh my gosh, you called $300, can't beat Jack High? You can't beat Jack High, $300. What is wrong with you? Well, it was obviously a hand reading mistake by the guy the guy could beat jack high but he looked at the cards a number of times and he uh, and he saw a flush for ron ron didn't have a flush ron had jack high and the guy folded his cards obviously a mistake uh but it was just it was a really really interesting conversation we must have used that line 10 times during the night you called 300 dollars and can't beat jack high <laughs> it was very very funny it was a again a very very fun table very very uh entertaining uh good guys uh and, and it was an action table too so that's good all right, this next hand is played very, very late at night against a regular, his name is Joe. I only ever see Joe playing very, very late at night. Joe is very talkative. He likes to talk during the hand. He likes to try and get information from you. He likes to yuck it up. He's just a, he's a fun player to play with, but he's also very smart. He's not doing that just to have fun. He's doing that to try and figure out what you have, and he's a pretty darn good player. 
I am under the gun with Ace of Clubs, Queen of Clubs. I have $650. I make it 13. Joe in middle position one, uh, the hijack and the button all call. So the flop now, 56 in the pot, comes Queen of Spades, six of diamonds, two of clubs. I lead out for 25, Joe makes the call, and the other two fold. The turn now, three of spades, I check intentionally, hoping he will fire. He fires for more than I expected him to. He fires for 42. I then go ahead and go all in for his effective stack of 182. He tanks and tanks. He shows the king of spades and says, I'm on a really good flush draw. And he folds though. So then he's on me like, hey, aren't you going to show me your cards? No, I am not, Joe. You have beat me plenty of times. You know how I play. Uh, <laughs> I'm not giving you any more information. So on the last vlog, I told you the guys that uh, Rob and I had been doing some studying and that we were going to try and take that study to the uh, WSOP circuit and see if we can't do well. Well, Rob did really, really well in the first one and so did two of my other friends. I don't have time to do all of that on this vlog, so we're going to continue this. But uh, uh, the training is, is working out. It's making us better. So that's pretty exciting. Also at Choctaw, I got a lead on a potential place where I might be able to do a Mr. Bill meetup game. We're going to be in negotiations and talking about maybe uh, how we might be able to get together and do something that would benefit both of us. So uh, hopefully that will be sooner than later. So with that, let's end this vlog, although look for another one coming up probably relatively soon, sooner than I normally would on the WSOP circuit uh, first couple of tournaments. And you guys have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed week. Stay warm, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.